Grand Maju. Grand Maju? Grand Maju can finish second at OICS. And you can't even top with pendulums. Luckily, Triff is here. Welcome to the first video of the new series. Because you know what? In Yu-Gi-Oh, there's only one thing that matters and one thing only. And that's winning. The world champion has been declared. Congratulations. Vice is just dope 2019. And that's today. Winning can bring sadness or absolute happiness. Brian New of Canada. Your boy even got a green screen. It's reason enough to smash that subscribe button. It's reason enough to punch the smash the like button. And let's go straight into the very first video in the series. Now, if you missed the earlier announcement, Triff Gaming moving forward will only be about competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, okay? Now, this is one big-ass notepad, okay? There's actually writing on it. I don't know if you can tell from the angle you saw it at. But it's one big-ass notepad of notes and research that I made about exactly what went down at YCS Portland in order to educate you, the greatest fans in the entire world, that without you guys, I'd be nowhere. So, thank you all. I'm doing this for you guys. Started all off, there was 801 players at YCS Portland. 801 players, and then only 32 of them made the final top 32 that everyone loves and for some of you uh, can't seem to get. This is the first YCS since Fist of the Gadgets, which is why it's relevant, and the first YCS since Rockets Revolt or whatever the Starter Deck's called. And this is relevant because people don't know if the Rocket Starter Deck was good or not. And you know what? Zero Rocket Decks topped. Zero. Zero Dragon Links topped. So let that be known for some of you that just see the deck and like, hey, I want to try it. Yeah, well, guess what? It didn't top at all. No Fire Fist topped. Surprise, surprise. Deck sucks. Sorry if you invested in it. But it's still a good set. So if you guys are still interested in any of them, even though, you know, there's a lot better sets out there, like, you know, Pendulum Evolution, hey, you can check it out in the description below. My sponsor has it on deck for you guys, YGOMarket.com. Now, what actually topped Portland? What top YC is Portland? Triff. Hey, Triff. Hey, Triff. How many decks, how many Pendulum decks top YCS Portland? Well, let me tell you, four of them, which is actually a great number. Why? Because the meta is so diverse right now. This is a list of the top 32, a pie chart of the top 32 decks that top. And you know what? As you see, there is so many different good decks, and I love to see that. There is not one crazy good deck like Pendulums. There's just five different good decks. You can use any of them and win. Now, to get into them in depth, there are seven Orcus decks. That top. Five Salamangrade decks. Five Skysucker decks. Five Thunder decks. Four Endymion decks. And four Rogue decks. That is amazing. That is amazing to me. I love seeing that. I love seeing that so much. Because it is not like, oh. And you know, a lot of these even up going second. They want to go second. So it's not just a die roll format. It's actually a fantastic format at the moment. Where you could take any of these decks and do something. Now, to go into the decks more. The 7 Orcas decks. None of them made top 4. But, 3 of them were Danger Orcas. One of them was a Luna Light Danger Orcas. One of them was Ib Turbo. One of them was a Warrior Orcas deck. One of them was a Goki Orcas deck. All of them are super cool. And if you do want, let me know in the comments below. If you want me to contact any of these Orcas guys that topped. And get their deck profiles for you guys. You can more so learn the decks more. As I said moving forward, the deck will be a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh only. So if, these are all competitive decks. These are all decks that have topped and topped previously. So they're not dead. If you're a fan of these decks, let me know in the comments. I'll get it for you guys. Next, Salamangrate. Five of them topped. Three of them are normal Salamangrates that we all know. Two of them are spicy. Two of these Salamangrate lists had danger Salamangrate. Which if you're a Salamangrate fan or Salamangrate player... I'd actually recommend using because you need to make Stalio somehow. So why not instead of using the shit link three, uh, the shit level threes, use the danger level threes, Jackalope and Sukunoko. The list, one of the danger salamangrates actually ended up getting top four, and this is the list for you guys if you want to see it. It is actually a fantastic list. I really like it. Uh, in fact, one thing to know here, he does play two Ash Blossom, not three, uh, which is cool because you know what? It's only once per turn and it doesn't end turns. Ash. And usually you'd want to play three because it's a Salamangre deck, but Droll Lockbird and Phantasma is only a hand trap you play three of, which is interesting. And you do see uh, Double Will, which is also interesting, I believe. But what it's 14 hand traps, if I can count. I can't really count. Actually, Triff Mine's like 13. I, I don't know. Screw math, bro. It it's 13, Triff. Jokes. 
Anyways, I like the deck. Finished top four. I'm a believer in solid mangrades. I don't think it's dead. Next, we have five Sky Striker decks at top. Every Sky Striker deck looks the same. So I'm not even going to go into this, aside from the two that finished top four. So, you look at the top four here from Garan Williams. Also, from Salamangre, shout out to Joe Alavarez for finishing top four. Uh, now, Garan Williams for finishing top four with, with Strikers. You see his list here. Uh, one notable card, a card choice about his list is the three Solemn Judgments, which is actually super cool in the deck. Uh, I noticed Jesse Cotton tried that once against me, and he actually obliterated me when he did it. Uh, so, wait, good kudos to Garon Williams and whoever decided to play Solemns in this deck. Because you're basically playing a bunch of good cards, and why not throw some of the best cards in, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Solemn Judgment in it? Now, if you look at num first place, first place at the event, okay? Brian Chen! He finished first place at YCS Portland. With what deck, you may ask? Sky Striker. And if you look at number four's list over here, it's not that much different. Because you know what? Most Sky Striker decks are the same anyways. Now you look at Brian Chen's list, you look at the notable difference. Not much, but instead of Solemn Judgment, he opted for There Can Be Only One. Or There Can Only Be One. However the hell, I can't read either. Or math, whatever. I can only Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, you also notice another difference. He plays Double Desires over the third MST and the second... Uh, Ego Booster, which is a dual not notable thing to know as well. One note that Brian Chen, the champ himself, the champ, the champ himself, told me. I messaged him. I said, Brian Chen, I would like to know what goes through your mind when you build for one of the, get ready for one of these events. What goes through your mind? How would you finish first? Are you just the best player in the world? Is there a certain card you use that was just amazing? Is there can only be one that broken? And he said very humbly, I'm not that good of a player. I'm not that skilled. So I just have to play the best deck. So I just played 40 best, 40 amazing cards. And guess what? I won. Very humble response from the champ. Very humble response. And why is that beeping? I think it's a fire alarm. I actually do. I'm going to have to fix that eventually. Congratulations, Brian Chan, finishing first place. Five Thunders top. I expected more Thunders to top. Out of the five Thunders at top, we're looking at two Crusadia Danger Thunder, two Crusadia Thunder, and one Pure Thunder, which is crazy because Pure Thunder won the UDS. I expected at least five Pure Thunder to top, and guess what? They didn't. And you know what? Surprise, surprise. They suck. I'm just being honest. I think Chaos Thunder is the only way to play Thunder. I really do. I think Chaos Thunder is the only way. Pure Thunder is a joke. I'm sorry. Anyways. Next up, the best deck in the planet. <coughs> Endymion Pendulums. Four of them top. And if you notice in the past, how many Pendulums usually top? One, two, zero, me? I'm not even bad. I will be, I'm bad soon. Four of them topped. One of which finished top eight. This is his deck list. I like it for the fact that it is pure Endymion. Magicians aren't that good. I love magicians so much. Believe me, I love them. I love them. I love them. But at the moment, Time Gazer is the best one. And I never thought in a million years I would ever say that. But Time Gazer protecting the best pendulum card in the game, which is Servant, is extremely vital. And a lot of the times, you're going to want a pendulum call for Time Gazer and normal sub in it to make sure Servant resolves. Because when Servant resolves, you just win the duel. One thing to note is the new ruling for Ash Blossom and Servant. This really, I, I, I hate it. Because for most of us that could read, and I, I know I can't read, but I could read this because I, I only read Yu-Gi-Oh. It's not Summon. You should not be able to Ash Blossom it. But the new ruling is if you Ash Blossom Servant, you cannot use its effect again. Which came up in a top 8 of the top 8 match of our guy here that finished uh, top 8 with Endymion. So shout out to him and shout out to the other 3 Endymion players who topped. Now... Four rogue decks topped, one of which you already know finished second place, Grand Maju. This is the deck profile. I love the deck profile, the deck list. Because if it doesn't get Grand Maju, if it doesn't draw Grand Maju, it destroys a card in the field. It's similar to my UA mind list. So if it's not UA, sorry, if it's not a Mystic Mind card, or if it's not a UA card, it's a pop a card in the field, or pop an interruption. Same idea here. If it's not a draw card, if it's not a... Uh, if it's not a Grand Madru card, it is a card that destroys a card in the field. Or that makes a rank 8. Which lets you Grand Madru them. 
because the whole deck is level 8 and the whole deck pops cards. Great job. Great job. Eshawn McChad. That's your new name. Eshawn McChad. Great job. Great list. Next, True Draco also top. And two more rogue decks in the, the Toronto top 32. Necroz topped. Great job for Necroz guy. And Sub Terror. And two Alter Guys also topped. And two Alter Guys. One of which is Doug Zeef. Shout out my boy Doug Zeef. I got a message from Doug Zeef that I got banned. Good job, Doug Zeef. I got a message from Doug Zeef that he topped. So great job. You will be another Yugi Tooper, such as myself, topping. Now, I would like to give an honorable shout out before we finish up uh, the, the top 32 breakdown. 33rd place. None other than the best Yugi Tooper in the world. Sam. 33rd. F's in chat for Sam. I'm sorry, Sam. 33rd. He played Cyber Dragons. He's amazing. Great guy. Great guy. That sums up the top 32 breakdown. Tomorrow's video will be a top 5 decks of the meta with YCS Portland in mind. With all the decks in mind. Etc. Etc. And really, how to prepare for it. So I hope you guys like this new style of video. Okay. It will improve as days go on. With this beeper. Hope. Fully shutting up. And, you know, maybe we'll get some guest uploads. Some duels in this upcoming week of the meta vs. meta. The top five decks and why. The top five rogue decks and why. And my unbanned is 19 days away. So hit the subscribe. Hit the, hit the subscribe button if you guys got this. Hope you like the video. See you next video. Peace.